An alpha particle moves in a straight line in a vacuum with a constant speed v. And it only entered the field at point A. So from A onwards only there's some kind of field happening here. So I'm going to just shade this so I can have a reminder that A. Only there only got field, okay? Don't know which direction, but there's a field. So the alpha particle continue to move until it, it is brought to rest by the electric field somewhere inside here. The deceleration of the particle is 2.7 times 10 to the 4. Now that's a strange thing. You have a positive charge and eventually will stop moving at B. That means somebody's slowing it down. Mm. So we have uh, some kind of uh, acceleration happening to the left and that acceleration can only happen if there is an electric force to the left. So an alpha particle experience to the left, which means the electric field is to the left. Mm, okay, so we can say, uh, you know, say the direction of the field, right? You could say to the left, but an uh, even better way is to say from B, from B to A, to be very specific in terms of the diagram. It's still okay, we can still see to the left. Okay, so now we need to calculate distance AB. This is where a Stuva equation is needed because we have our initial velocity. Final has stopped. We got some super insanely the big acceleration. 2.7 times 10 to 14. Wow! So that's our Stuva at work. Okay, let's see. What, what information do we have? Distance traveled. I think that's what we want to find. We don't know. T, we don't have. U, we do have a very fast speed coming in. V, stop moving. Acceleration, 2.7 times 10 to the 14. There is one danger here. You see the direction of velocity, right? It's pointing to the right. You see the direction of acceleration? It's pointing to the left. So whenever there is uh, kinematics vectors involved, you must define your direction. I think this is where a common mistake a lot of us make. So I'm going to choose things that move to the right as positive. Anything that move to the left is negative. So this will be a positive my velocity. Positive velocity and a negative acceleration. So it's at negative, positive. Or the other way around also can. But one of them must be a negative. <sighs> So here we have news V U A S. So yes, negative. V square goes to U square plus two A S will be the fastest way. Lah. Yes, this deceleration is a good good hint. Deceleration means your velocity and your acceleration is in opposite direction. So we got V zero, just plug in everything lah. Four point one times ten to the negative six square. 2 times a negative 2.7 times 10 to the 14 distance AB. Alright, I think should be no calculation error. You should get 0 0.0311. Okay, uh, final answer. You could write in standard form, you can leave it at 0 0.031. But you must have at least 2 SF. So 3.1 times 10 to a negative 2. 2 SF at least. Alright, so 1 is here. One more mark is... They're probably not going to give you for V square, U square. You know why? Because this is given in the equation sheet. So they cannot give you a mark for just writing, copying something from the equation sheet. So they're probably going to give you one for your correct values of substitution, especially this part, which tends to catch a lot of us. Uh, substituting the correct values in. All right, let's go on. Calculate the electric field strength. Oh, I have a data sheet here. Nice. Electric field strength. Oh, E. So whenever you, they ask you to find electric field strength, you through a bit what what are the, the equations that have e that you kind of know there's two common ones at as it's either e equals to v over d or f equals to qe 
The problem is we don't have enough information for V. We don't have enough information for D. Separation between the plates. So it's very risky to use this method actually. We don't have enough information. I mean, you could find it and actually for this method, if you happen to try that, use that method, you can get the same answer, but it may not always be correct. So we'll go with Fe equals Qe. Why does a particle decelerate because of electric force? So the force causes an acceleration or deceleration. That's Newton's second law. Who's the force acting on the particle? Electric force pointing to the left. Okay, so you're still moving, you're still moving to the right. But because of the force to the left, you're accelerating to the left. Okay, so I'm right. acceleration due to a net force. And there's only one force, assuming, acting on this thing. So this will be QE equals to MA. The tricky thing is, we have to be careful what we substitute in for our E. Okay, let's, let's just substitute right away. Q. What is the Q of an alpha particle? Let's go up and see. Alpha particle. A charge of alpha particle must know why. Uh, this one is two protons, two neutrons. So the charge is positive to E. Why is E? I'm lazy to write the E, but you can find in your data formula sheet, elementary charge. 1.6 times 10, negative 19. So again, write that down, okay? This is 1.6 times 10, negative 19. Cool. Up. Okay, so we have 2E to find the E. And then the mass. Mass of alpha. If you look at this picture here, there's four, four BG. <laughs> four balls, or what we call that four nucleons. That's a proper word. Four nucleons. So each nucleon has a mass of one U. So each four will have four U. What is U? If you go to the uh, data formula sheet, you will see the atomic mass constant, this one, U. So you can take each nucleon have a mass of U when they are together inside a nucleus. Okay, when they're together. Huh? All right, so we have our four friends. So this will be 4U. I'm not going to write the U because it's... Just go and find the data formula sheet because a lot of things to write. A deceleration. Okay, I write one time here, 1.66 times 10, negative 27. Deceleration was what again? Uh, there we go, 2.7 times 10 to the 14. Let's write down. 2.7 times 10 to the 14. Okay, divide everything, you should find an E of about 5.6 times 10 to the 6. So here's 5.6 times 10 to the 6. Okay. One mark for final. One mark probably from equating QE equals to MA. Like you should know that what's the force adding on? What's the force that caused the acceleration? Only one force. So QE equals to MA. The other one comes from I think substituting the correct values, especially the U and the E. Some of us may forget how to find M. Some of us may not know how to find the E. So that will be the last one there. All right, we are almost near the end. Wait, no, this question is really long. Wow, this is a 15 mark question. Why does CIE do this? Oh, yeah. So alpha particle is at point A is time t0. Sketch the variation momentum of alpha particle as it travels from point A to point B. Okay, before you start thinking of all kinds of equations, momentum is mass times velocity, right? So you think about how the velocity is changing as you move from A to B. So we go to the diagram. Remember which now we say you start off with a very fast speed. Eventually you stop because they tell us it's stop. So your momentum should start off very high and end at zero because that's when you stop. Okay, so we go down, right? High and zero. So we we'll start off by plotting two points from here to here. That's step one. Step one, start and end points. Step two, you need to draw the, the, the trend of the line. Is it a straight line? Is it a curve? Here's one tip for you. Huh? If it is one mark, it is probably a straight line. <laughs> probably. And it is actually a straight line. So we're going to draw a straight line with a ruler. 
But if you're not convinced and you're worried, what if, miss, what if it's not a straight line? Then if you want to be sure, you need to do some equation magic. So you know P equals to MV. And you could say you need something in terms of time, right? You could substitute P equals to M times U plus AT. How about that? Remember our Stuva equation? V equals to U plus AT. And then you get roughly some value here already. So this is MU plus MAT. And you say, Miss, I can't recognize this equation. Uh, you wait now, wait now. We haven't finished yet. Huh? This is M. A T plus M U. This is our straight line equation. Who's on the y axis? P. Who's on the x axis? T. Then other things? Constant. Y equals to MX plus C. So since our acceleration is going to be negative in our system, you will have a negative MX plus C. That's how you confirm it's a linear law, you check the graph. P related to V related to T. No square, no square root. Okay. Let's look at part E now. So state the quantity that is represented by the gradient of the graph. If I take any any point on the graph and I say, hey, let's find the gradient. Draw a little triangle. That is going to be your delta P delta T. Or you could say, it's the DP DT. Does this ring a bell? This is this is the definition of that force or force acting on the particle that caused that change in momentum. So this one, we can say this is the electric force on the particle. If you didn't mention electric, I think it's okay lah. But you must say force. It's an important one. So this one is a B one. Oh, here we go to mark straight line. Straight line negative gradient. Okay, part F. So now we have done the whole thing with alpha particle. We change it with a beta particle coming in and eventually don't know what happened to it. But it has the same initial speed. First thing first, calculate the kinetic energy in joules. Whoa, so nice. Ke is half mv squared. So we just need to substitute our stuff. But you need to know what the mass of the electron is. If you don't memorize it, we have our data formula sheet. Now you're thinking about one electron by itself. So do we have electron here? Yes, we do. Rest mass of electron. Use that value for your mass. Electron is moving now. Right, so we got half. That super small number, maybe 1 times 10, negative 31. This is in kg, by the way. And the velocity or speed. So that'll be 4.1 times 10 to the 6. Oh, almost forgot the square. Oh, yo, I always forget the square. Then I always get wrong. So this one, if I remember everything correctly, it should be 6 point, 7 point 6.657 times 10, negative 18. So this will be 7.7 .7 times 10, negative 18. Half mv square, okay? It's pretty standard. Uh, I think one mark they can give you for C1. Uh. Half mv square. And one more mark probably come for the fact that you know where to find this mass of electron. Alright, last part. Last two questions. State and explain the differences between the electric force on the beta and the electric force on the alpha in the electric field. Hmm, let's draw this electric field once again. So if you are in an electric field, and if you want to follow the convention just now, let's say electric field is pointing this way. If you have an alpha, the charge is too positive, E. So that means you experience a force in this direction, quite big. If you have a beta, it's a minus, you know, so minus and the one E only. You will also experience a force, but in the opposite direction and not as big of a magnitude because your Q is only E. So how do we explain that process? The force magnitude is different. The force direction is also different. And we need to state the difference 
we need to also explain the difference. So I'm going to say, <coughs> uh, let's start with, just to be safe, uh, we're going to mention that they're same in the same electric field, right? Hmm. Uh, how shall we start with this one? Uh, both particles in the same E field experience a force in opposite directions. But don't stop there yet, just in case they want you to explain. So we got to say, because, why opposite? Because alpha is positively charged and beta is negatively charged. You could also say both particles have opposite charges. One positive, one negative. Also can, uh, that, that can work too. The other difference is the magnitude of the force. So you can say, since F equals to QE, who has a bigger charge? Alpha. So we can say, the alpha particle experiences or force on alpha can also la, experiences a larger force because its charge is two times or double the charge of beta you can also say uh, force is double, two times larger. Kind of thing. Just write all the details inside there because you don't know what the details they're asking for. So, where shall we give the marks? Uh? Actually, uh, I don't know. There's all kind of different places. At the time of recording this, the, the mask game officially is not out and will not be out until many months later. So, we just got to roll with it. One, if you talk about opposite directions, that's probably one key idea. And the other one, you compare the magnitude of force. Ooh, I should compare the, right, the magnitude. Magnitude of force two times. And we need to explain also, right? So probably one more mark comes from talking about their charges. Positive charge, negative charge. So you go compare the charge, positive charge, negative charge, two times, one time. It's going to be one mark. Lah. So again, we're, we're going to say, let's see, how shall we have about marks here? Um, let's just give all B1 marks. Okay, so B1 here, B1 here, and B1 here. Okay, last part. So they're just going to throw in the particle physics. A beta particle is produced by decay of a nucleus. Some reaction happen, produce beta. Minus. Something else is always produced with a beta. If this is beta minus, it's called an electron. It's normal matter. So antimatter must come up with it. So we have antineutrino that will come up with this. So we got anti. Neutrino. Must remember the NT. This one is B1. And that's the end finally of this super long question. 15 marks. I It's been a very long time since I see Cambridge ask 15 mark questions. But that's all for this question.